Uh, we've come to part six of uh, the classic tradition of haiku by Fabian Bowes. And we had, uh, we had, uh, we were, on part five, we were talking about Busan's poetry and continuing with Busan. Busan is the painter and the poet. We have o Ochi Zamaini. Why has it fell? Water that was in it spilled Camilla Bell. Why, as it fell, water that was in it spilled, Camilla Bell. Hmm. Camilla Bell. Mel, I thought it was uh, had some white flowers there. Take a look that up. Why is it fell? Water that was in it spilled. Camilla Bell. Next poem. Suri Gani Ni. On the great temple bell, stop from flight and sleeping. A small butterfly. I may have seen this one, but anyways, it's somewhat different anyways with a different translation. On the great temple bell, stop from flight and sleeping, the small butterfly. It's interesting, the butterfly is <laughs> sleeping on the bell, which he could be rudely awakened. <laughs> but, and then we have Lowell, Amy Lowell writes a poem titled Peace. Don't know the relationship. That some of the like uh, English poets are influenced by the Hoka poets. I don't know if she's influenced. This, this is Amy Lowell's piece, poem Peace. Amy Lowell, 1874 to 1925, perched upon the muzzle of a cannon. A yellow butterfly is slowly opening and shutting its wing. I don't know if she knew of Busan, but Amy Lowell writes, perched upon the muzzle of a cannon, a yellow butterfly is slowly opening and shutting its wings. Well, back in Japan, uh, Hmm. Busan says, On the great temple bell, stop from flight and sleeping, the small butterfly. Hmm. Next poem, Nichi o Hoiti. The peony bud, when opening, shoots forth the rainbow. The peony bud. When opening, shoots forth a rainbow. Hmm. How is that? <laughs> the pe tree peony, king of flowers, when its huge white buds open, reveals speckled red and black depths like a kabuki kumadori makeup. Not sure what that is. Kabuki Kumadori makeup. Anyways, it shoots forth speckled red and black depths. <laughs> All right, so it's got a rainbow of colors. <laughs> Upon white. <laughs> the peony bud, when opening, shoots forth a rainbow. Of course, he's a painter. He might be sensitive to these colors. 
Not that the non-painters are not sensitive. No. Hotan Chitti. Peony petals fell, piling one upon another in twos and threes. Peony petals fell, piling one upon another in twos and threes. In twos and threes. So peonies' petals have fallen now. And they are falling in twos and threes. Most high school students, most Japanese high school students can recite this oku. Though few can explain its meaning, pollen petals seem to Busan as gorgeous as the full-blown flower. Busan wrote some 20 haiku on the subject of peonies. Seriti Nochi. After they've fallen, their image remains in the mind, those peonies. After they've fallen, their image remains in the mind, those peonies. No comment. Nashi no Hana. A woman reading a letter by moonlight. Pear blossoms. A woman reading a letter by moonlight. Pear blossoms. Hmm. Not sure how they relate. Hmm. It'll take a long period of study. <laughs> or maybe not. Hmm. Anyways, na no hanaya. Na no hanaya. Rape flowers eastward the moon, westward the sun. All right, so east is the moon, west is the sun. Rape flowers. Mm, the rape plant, a close relative of the wild mustard, is cultivated for rape seed oil, which is burned with cotton wicks for lamplight. Despite its unfortunate name in English, it is a much admired by flower viewers for its forsythia like wands of stringent yellow flowers. Here it is the late afternoon, and both the setting sun and the rising moon are visible over a golden carpet of rape flowers. Mm, sounds impressive. Yeah. If you could see it, it must be beautiful. Rape flowers, eastward the moon, westward the sun. Yoko Hiki Ya. Hunter out before dawn. Dog scolds him on the far side of the fence. Hunter out before dawn, a dog scolds him on the far side of the fence. Hmm. Surprising, huh? Hmm. The barking will alert the prey, and the hunter, despite his his stealth and his early hours deprived of hopeful hope for a quarry. So now the dog disrupted his hunting. Mm -hmm. Musa Sabi no. A flying squirrel sits chewing on a bird withered field. A flying squirrel sits chewing on a bird withered field. Flying squirrel. Hmm. Now the squirrel is flying and the bird isn't. I don't know what's going on here. 
Hmm. Complicated. Busan's own favorite among his thousands of haiku. Hmm. This Busan's fa one Busan's own favorite. Hmm. Totally significant. A flying squirrel sits chewing on a bird withered field. Musasabi no kotori amiru karino kana. See that word kana so many times. Next poem. Sirami ni aku ru yo. Bakari to Narini Kari. For white plum blossoms, time has come for the day to break. For white plum blossoms, the time has come for the day to break. Hmm. White plum blossoms, time has come for the day to break. I thought the day would break and then the plum blossoms would do something, but here for white plum blossoms, time has come for the day to break. Hmm. Very advanced. It says this one is Busan's farewell and final poem. Farewell. Here's his farewell and final poem of Busan. Shira Mini Akiru Yo Bakari to Narete Kari. Reading from the classic tradition of haiku. For white plum blossoms, time has come for the day to break. That the day is breaking. So I'm coming to the end of reading Busan. And then that's the end of part six. And the next time we'll probably have Yota. End of part six, reading from the classic tradition of Yutan for Fabian Bowers. Busan is a painter and a poet who comes I think later than Basho. Now it's time for his day to break and I'm breaking this recording.